we know that a basis is very useful. But how can we determine whether a given set is a basis? Well, by checking the three properties a basis needs to satisfy. We will see an explicit example in this video. We will have as a set containing 1 plus t, t plus t squared and 1 plus t squared. I wonder whether this set S is a basis for P2. Well, then it has to satisfy three properties. First of all, it has to be a subset of P2. Well, that's easy to see. All three members are affected in P2, so this is fine. Then you have to check whether this set S is independent. So you have to see whether the equation C1 V1 plus C2 V2 plus C3 V3 equals zero. That's only the trivial solution. Well, it would require some work. Fortunately, we have done this work already in an earlier web lecture, and we saw that this set is indeed independent. So that part is fine. Then we have to check whether this set spans P2, whether we can form any factor in P2 out of these three factors. That is not so easy to see, so let's try to check that. So take any factor in P2, say P equals A plus B times T plus C times T squared, where A, B and C can be any number in R. And we'll have to be able to make that out of our three vectors, V1, V2 and V3. So we have to find weights C1, C2 and C3, such as C1 times V1 plus C2 times V2 plus C times V3 is exactly this factor over here. Now clean up the mess a bit on the left hand side. So all terms with the 1, C1, the C3 over here, with the T, C1, the C2 over here, and with the D squared, C1, the C3 over here together. And now we see that the left hand side is only equal to the right hand side if the coefficient in front of the 1 over here is equal to A, coefficient in front of the T over here equals the p, and the coefficient in front of the t squared equals the coefficient in front of the t squared over there. So, what do we get? We get three conditions. We get three equations into, into the unknowns c1, c2, and c3. And we wonder whether this a problem has a solution. Well, we know how to do that. We have a linear system, so we form an augmented matrix. And then we are over there in terms of a, b, and c. And we wonder whether this problem has a solution for all values of a, b, and c. Well, let's try. First, we do here a minus 1. Uh, and then we get a b minus 1, b minus a over there, so that's kind of awkward, but okay. And then we continue the row reduction. We do a minus 1 over there. And then we get a horrible term over here. But the only thing you need to know is whether you can solve this problem, not uh, what exactly the solution is. You have to see whether the system is consistent or not. But now you can see it, because you see that every row has a, piv has a pivot, so you can find a solution. In fact, you have uh, on the last uh, row 0 times c1 plus 0 times c2 plus 2 times c3 equals something, so you can find c3 and so on and so on. And so you can continue. So you know your solution has a solution, a unique solution, in fact. Uh, so you know that this is consistent regardless of the choices A, B, and C, and R. So any P of T can be expressed in terms of your V1, V2, V2 and V3. So it means that S spans P2. That was the last condition we had to check. It is also satisfied. So S is a basis of P2.